Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I want to look at connected rates of change. This is following on from differentiation. It's an application of differentiation. So make sure you can differentiate first. Check out my videos on differentiation and the chain rule before you begin. This video today is looking at when you have a few different variables and how they relate to each other in differentiation. As ever, do grab a pen and paper. I'm gonna go through three exam style questions. Um, so do the working yourself, pause the video and rewind and work at your own pace. Do let me know if this is helpful, leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you, or get in touch if you want to know anything about online tuition or Starfish Masterclasses. You can drop me an email at starfishmaths at gmail.com or get in touch on Instagram. Okay, are you ready? Let's get started. So here we have our first question. Um, I'll leave that there for a few moments for you to take a note if you want to. Uh, we've got a big balloon being inflated um, and we're given the surface area of a sphere, which is useful. We don't have to know that off by heart. So really, in these kind of questions, we just need to figure out what we're being told and what we're being asked for and make a kind of uh, chain rule type equation to help us out. We're given that the radius of the balloon is increasing at a rate of 12 centimetres per hour. So we're given something is 12 and how to know what that thing is that we're being told. Um, if you're not sure, look at the units. The units there were centimetres per hour. Anything to do with rate is how it changes over time. So anything to do with rate is uh, dt on the bottom and it's the radius, so the change in the radius, so dr. And if you look at the unit, centimetres per hour, then that fits because we've got a length over a time, centimetres per hour. So that's what we've been given. We're then asked to find the rate that the surface area changes. So we're asked to find how an area increases, so we'll call that dA, and it's the rate again, so by dt, that's what we're being asked for. And again, if you look back at the question, the unit says centimetres squared per hour, so that agrees an area divided by a time. So, um, we're asked for, to find the dA by dt, and we're given dr by dt. I find the best thing to do here is to set up a little chain rule equation um, and put what we want on the top, on the top of the first um, derivative, and what we want on the bottom, on the bottom of the second one. Um, and then whatever we put here and here needs to be the same so that they cancel out, so that we're left with dA by dt. So um, what we've got here is dr by dt, so it's going to be dr, so we'll fill that in. So can you see how the drs would cancel to leave us with that? So that is an equation that works. Um, that's what we're wanting to find. dr by dt we have, that's 12, and we need now dA by dr. Now look, here we've got surface area of a sphere. We've got area equals 4 pi r squared. So if we differentiate that, we'll have dA will be uh, differentiating with respect to that variable r, so that will be dA by dr, and that's what we're looking for, so that's great. So differentiating that, pi is a number, it's a constant, so we're just differentiating, which we'll leave that like it's a number, and it's just the r, Bring that the 2 comes down to the front and that power goes down by 1. So now we've got both of those, we can put them back into that equation. So we're looking for dA by dt, and that will be 8 pi r times by dr by dt, which is 12. And the question also tells us the radius at the time that they want it. So the radius is 150. So putting that into the calculator, we can get an answer. So you can either leave that answer as, in terms of pi or just as a number. Great, I hope that made sense. Let's have a look at another one. Okie dokie, here we've got the second question. Again, I'll leave the words up for a few moments. This is a question about um, water in a reservoir. We're told that water is flowing into the reservoir at a constant rate of 150 cubic metres per hour. So looking at the units there, it's to do with volume per hour. So it's going to be dv by dt. 
So picking out what we've been told, dV by dt, the rate of change of the volume, is a constant rate of 150. OK, and what are we being asked for? We're being asked for the rate of change of the depth of water. The depth in this question is given by an h. So we're looking for the change of h over time, the rate of change of, a, of h. So that's dh by dt. I think that's in um, metres per hour. Yeah, so we're being asked for dh by dt. And now we can um, set up our equation to figure out what else we need. So again, like last time, we'll put dh on the top and dt on the bottom of the first and second and fill in the other variable that will cancel. The other variable we've got here is v, so dv. dv by dt we've got, that's 150, um, and we need dh by dv. So looking at the equation that we're given here, um, obviously we're going to use that because that's the information we've been given, um, and that if we differentiate it will give us dv by dh, so that's uh, the reciprocal of that one there. So let's now differentiate that equation. I'm just rewriting that h with a power of a half so it's easier to differentiate and this when we differentiate it dh dv dv by dh that will be a chain rule type differentiation so we've got to differentiate the outside and multiply by the derivative of the inside, so that will be a half h to the minus a half. Minus 192 will vanish. Uh, let's just neaten that up a little. Okay, so that gives us dv by dh. We want dh by dv, so we need to flip it upside down. So when we flip that upside down, the root h will go on the top and then all that other stuff will go on the bottom and then we multiply by dv by dt and again we're given um, the h that they want us to use at this instant so the h is 1.4 so we can put that into the calculator and I make that to be 0 0.06 great well done if you got that let's look at one more question Okay, last question. We've got a cone here, beautifully drawn. Um, we're also given some extra information in the question, which I've written out by hand because they're too difficult to type. Uh, we're given the volume of a cone, so V is a third pi r squared h, uh, so you don't need to know that off by heart. We're also given the, some information about the angle. We're not given the actual angle itself um, in degrees or anything, but we're, but we're given it in terms of tan. So straight away we can just um, rewrite that actually as tan of alpha is a half. Um, when you're given information about an angle like that, you generally you don't need to work it out in degrees. It's probably best to just to keep it like that. And then in any calculation you can just work with tan alpha and substitute that directly and then it's more accurate. Um, so we'll leave that. So we've got liquid filling into this cone. And we're being told some information. We've got the... Um, liquid is added at the rate of 14 cubic centimetres per minute. So um, working out what we're being told there, it's volume changing over time, centimetres cubed per minute. So that is dv by dt. And we're told that's 14. What are we being asked for? We want the rate of change of the depth. So we're wanting how x changes over time. So setting up an equation, we're wanting dx by dt, so putting the dx on the top of the first and dt on the bottom of the second. The other variable is v, so we can fill that in. dv. So we've got dv by dt um, and we want dx by dv. So the other information we have is about this here, volume with um, radius and height. We want something just connecting x and v, um, so we need to change this a little bit. And actually the exam question that I stole this from um, does guide you through this. It has a part A to it saying show that v is blah 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 in terms of x, but we'll just do that now together. 
So we want to change this to have it just in terms of x. Um, this here is a general um, formula for volume of a cone. H is the height. In this cone that we've got, the height is x. So we can actually just change, replace h with x. So now we just need to think about r in terms of x. And what we've got is this relationship with the um, right angle triangle and alpha. So if you look at the right angle triangle there with alpha and x, that there, that little bit would be the radius of the cone. So I'll put r there and we can set up an equation because um, it's a right angle triangle so tan of alpha is opposite over adjacent so r over x um, tan of alpha is a half so we can just replace that with r over x so just rearranging that to make r the subject r is a half x just squeezing this in here, r is a half x and that's being squared and then h is x again okay just bringing that down to this space here we've got v is um, where we square a half we'll have a quarter and times that by a third so a twelfth and then we'll have x squared times x again so x cubed Great, now we've got this um, formula that links v and x um, and we can differentiate it to get dv by dx. Again, pi is just a number, so just hold it there and bring the 3 across. So we'll have quarter pi x squared. And now we actually want dx by dv, so we need to flip that upside down. So the 4 will become the thing on the top and the pi and the x squared will go down to the bottom. Okay, so now we can go back and fill in what we know. So dx by dt will be this stuff here, multiplied by dv by dt, which is 14. And we're given an x at this point, I think it's 8, yep, 8. So putting that into the calculator. And I make that to be 0.28. Great! There we go. Not too bad, right? <laughs> I hope that was helpful. Keep practicing lots of different questions um, and have fun. Thank you for watching.